area, that meant no morning newspaper today. Several times truck drivers are taking their anger to the streets, often with violent results. Eric Sean reports. Come on, come on over here! Real close, Don't you scare buddies over there! Another ugly and violent labor dispute has hit New York's newspaper industry, but this time the target is the New York Times. This driver tried to stop a truck himself and was arrested. But about 100,000 copies of the paper of record were not delivered in Westchester, Connecticut, and Long Island after drivers at two times wholesalers were locked out after rejecting the latest contract. There's got to be a point where they can't treat you like dirt, and that's exactly how they treat us, like dirt. Last night, 20 drivers were arrested after rocks and bottles were thrown at their Teamsters replacements. One driver was injured when a rock thrown on the LIE smashed his windshield. We are not out to break these unions. Times publisher Arthur Salzberger says the union's leadership has ratified the contract, even though the drivers have not. Do you expect the labor unrest to spread to other departments and possibly shut the paper down? No, uh, I believe, uh, and I think last night was a good case in point, that uh, our production was not interrupted. Uh, the other unions at the New York Times have contracts which are in force. Uh, it is my hope and, and belief that they will be honored. While these drivers are out of a job, more than their financial security is at stake, but also the future of the newspaper business itself and how we, as readers, will receive the copies of our favorite newspapers every morning. In Farmingdale, Long Island, I'm Eric Sean, Fox 5 News. Did not get their morning paper or got it late. It's all because of a contract dispute involving drivers who deliver the New York Times. Julian Phillips is here now with the latest. Julian? Yes, Carol, it appears a judge's temporary restraining order against a driver's union has not done much to put the papers on the shelves. In fact, most drivers are not crossing the picket lines. It's going to be the same thing as the Daily News, except it's going to be a lot shorter because they, they are not getting the paper out of the stands. The New York Times is not out there. Chris Buett says it's simply a matter of control. He, like a handful of union drivers outside the New York Times New Rochelle distribution plant, say keeping the papers from getting out is a factor in their favor. At the station stationery on North Avenue, the shelves were indeed empty, a place where the Times is usually in abundance. Uh, we have a lot of loss because of the business, you know. There's a lot of loss. I'm not too happy, but I bought USA Today. The drivers are locked out in a contract labor dispute with New Jersey businessman Arthur Imperator. He's a new owner of two suburban distribution plants they work for here in New Rochelle and the other in East Farmingdale on Long Island. The drivers voted against a contract Imperator proposed, so he brought in replacements. After some scattered violence, a federal court judge ordered drivers to deliver the papers, but most drivers still refused to cross the picket lines. Due to the federal restraining order, we're very limited to what we could do. This morning, a suspicious fire burned a Times truck in Manhattan. It's not known whether it's related to the union dispute. Here in New Rochelle, one vandalized truck was towed into the plant, while others made it in without incident. However, one driver was angry over the large security force outside the plant, largely minority. And I can understand they need to work. Still, they shouldn't let people use them. How long would they have this job? Two or three weeks, they'd be back in the street, and I don't think that's right. And the lockout, even in its early stages, is already starting to affect some families. Want to buy a house? Anybody want to buy a house? I'm losing my house next. I don't know where my next meal is coming from. Well, if you live in Westchester, Connecticut, or Long Island, Sunday's edition of the New York Times just might be scarce. Thanks, Tree. A tense standoff continues tonight between truck drivers and the New York Times, and both sides are waiting to see what will happen later tonight when the trucks have to roll with the important Sunday edition. Channel 2's Lisa Castleman is monitoring the situation. She joins us live now from the New Rochelle Distribution Center. Lisa, what's it look like? Hi, Reggie. Well, this is the center behind me, and you see some of the union drivers here outside. This promises to be a very interesting night with suburban drivers off the job now for two days. The distribution of the New York Times is already beginning to falter. A New York Times distribution truck bound for Westchester County early this morning wound up in flames, never getting farther than Madison Avenue at 93rd Street. Most of the 108,000 papers bound for Westchester and Connecticut never made it. I'm not happy about it. I miss my Times. Without the Times, it's never a complete day. Local paper merchants are all hearing the same question. No New York Times? 
They don't know what's going on, some of them. Ever since contract talks between the drivers and wholesale distributors fell through Wednesday night, members of the newspaper Mailers and Deliverers Union have been on the streets, what they call a walkout. With replacement workers driving by and guards posted around the distribution plant, union drivers are on edge. These are toy soldiers. When I was a kid, I played with soldiers too, buddy. You gotta hide behind the fence. They wouldn't put that fence when we worked there. They put your monkeys in there. That's what the hell you are, monkeys. How would you feel if I came here and took your job? The suburban wholesalers for Westchester and Long Island were recently purchased by the Imperial Delivery Service. Even though the drivers had a contract supposedly good through April 1993, they lost out when a judge allowed the new wholesalers to buy only the distributors' assets, the trucks and the routes. They would not be responsible for honoring any contracts. What they did offer the drivers was an increase in base pay, but a drastic cut in overtime and other advantages. The package was rejected by the union drivers, so Imperial simply replaced them. How can you buy a company and just take the assets and no liabilities? I mean, that, the liabilities of the driver, that's not fair. I mean... For the past two days and nights, union workers have tried to block trucks from entering the wholesale centers. But the drivers were put under court order to make deliveries to any wholesaler facility. In some cases, union members successfully persuaded drivers to turn away and not make deliveries. Federal Judge Pierre Laval issued a statement criticizing the union's tactics, saying, quote, there is strong evidence at this point that the union is in contempt. It's understandable that people get excited, but the union has obligations under the law. Now, the union drivers are hoping that the other unions will honor them and help them out and possibly go on strike, but so far, no job actions yet. We'll just have to wait and see. Reporting live from New Rochelle, I'm Lisa Councilman. Now back to Reggie and Mary in the studio. Okay, thank you, Lisa. I'm Warren Lebuter, named author Imperatory. Bob O'Brien is standing by in New Rochelle. He has the latest. Bob, what can you tell us? Well, in a uh, state Supreme Court justice on Long Island issued a restraining order this afternoon limiting the number of pickets to 12 at each of Arthur Imperator's distribution uh, centers, of which this is one. The order also says union pickets must stay at least 75 yards from the facility. Uh, the union's uh, members say that they rejected the contract because it would eliminate overtime, cutting their pay in half down to about $40,000 a year. The dispute has created big problems getting the New York Times to its suburban readers. Around 4 o'clock this morning, a truckload of newspapers that had just left the Times building on West 43rd Street caught fire. When the truck stopped at Madison Avenue and 93rd Street, police say the driver found that the papers had been set on fire, perhaps with a flare. And in the Bronx, another truck a uh, tractor trailer loaded with New York Times papers was severely damaged when the driver turned off the Deegan Expressway and attempted to go under a low bridge. The driver said he was trying to escape a pack of cars that was surrounding his truck going along the highway attempting to force him off the road. The, the uh, top of the truck was ripped off and the 100,000 papers in the two trucks were headed to the wholesale distribution center here in New Rochelle. The Times says that the papers were eventually distributed, although hours later than normal. Now, at the New York Times building on West 43rd Street, there was a false fire alarm around 5 in the afternoon, but a few minutes later, other fire units were dispatched to the Times building when a dry chemical fire extinguishing system in the 7th floor central computer room was activated. That forced the computer area to be evacuated, and the computer system used to put out the paper was shut down. There were two bomb scares at the Times building today. The entire building evacuated around noon for about a half an hour, and then again around 7 this evening, another bomb scare emptied the building just as the already delayed first edition paper press run was started. Now, the Sunday first edition did make it onto the presses with the staff using a backup computer system, uh, and uh, the paper is a, thought to be going out right now, and uh, people who, who are getting the Times and who usually get a later edition will probably get the first edition tomorrow of the Sunday Times. Nancy Nielsen, speaking for the New York Times, calls today's events surrounding the, uh, the activities at the Times building, the false alarms and the... Uh, and the bomb scares, highly unusual. That's all she would say. Now, all sides in this dispute will be back in federal court before uh, Judge Pierre Laval on Monday morning. Judge Laval will decide if the union is in contempt of court, should be held in contempt of court, and whether or not he should start a series of fines against the union. Reporting live from New Rochelle, Bob O'Brien, Fox 5 News. Lynn, back to you. Experience with those deliveries. And since everything we've been, we've been receiving so far has gone out, we don't believe that the difficulties of Friday will be repeated. A federal judge has set a hearing for Monday to determine whether union members have been ignoring a restraining order to allow trucks to enter the distribution sites. If, in fact, the union is found in contempt, the union faces large and steadily increasing fines. In East Farmingdale, Long Island, Heidi Kemp, Channel 9 News.